Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first, but from the turnout, certainly not the last, NUCC ICT Investment Conference. My name is Lakshmi Karaju. I'm a board member at NUCC and have the pleasure to be your hostess today. Some practical information before we start. Uh, emergency exits is the one over here to the right. And of course, if you need the restroom, it's on the first floor or the third floor. We have a very exciting day ahead of us with guests and speakers from all over the world. I read in Often Post in last winter that John Kerry pointed to our next guest from the stage at a conference and told the audience, that guy there, he must be cloned. He popped up in so many places at the same time that the US Secretary of State thought there must be more than one of him. Kiev is one of his more frequent destinations, as he is a passionate supporter of Ukraine's territorial integrity and its sovereign right to choose its own path. Please welcome Norway's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Birgit Brenda. Thank you. Thank you for that kind um, introduction, uh, Minister, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it is uh, a great pleasure uh, to be uh, here today. It's great to see so many business people also ready for investing uh, in Ukraine. And as we all know, the topic um, of today is the future and the potential of the economy of Ukraine. I see no reason why Ukraine cannot be as successful in the coming 20 years as, for example, Poland was for the last 20 years. In 1991, Ukraine and Poland had a similar GDP per capita. Today, the Polish GDP per capita is three times higher than that of Ukraine. Next year is also quite a historical uh, year. Uh, NATO uh, meeting will be uh, in uh, Warsaw. Um, and that's where the Warsaw Pact was created. No, there is a NATO meeting. Um, coming back to the comparison between uh, Poland uh, and Ukraine, I think uh, this tells much about the recent economic history of Ukraine and Poland. I also believe that this story can inspire us as it shows what can be achieved through targeted reforms and efforts. Lack of good governance is a key reason why Ukraine, Ukraine failed to develop its full potential during the last decades. And good governance is the key to unlock its potential in the future. On top of the issues related to governance, the government in Kiev is also faced by the Russian destabilization of eastern part of Ukraine. But despite the significant pressures on the economy and the fragile situation in the east, I believe that there are favorable conditions in Ukraine today. The current government in Ukraine is pro-reform. The decisions made in Ukraine in the months ahead will probably shape the country for decades to come. I'm impressed by the agenda of President Poroshenko, Prime Minister uh, Yasunuk. Um, there are, there's also no a momentum in the government by the Minister of Finance, Minister of Economy, um, and the other ministers to really now dig into the necessary reforms. But this has to be, be delivered in the coming months. The reforms that Ukraine will have to go through are tough. There will be opposition to some of them, and there are also groups in Ukraine that will fight them, and then the leadership has to fight back. This will require political courage and leadership. It will require some help from your friends, but the most important changes will have to be made by Kiev itself. Business and enterprises must lead the way and press for changes. Changes to improve the business climate and changes to di distribute the benefits of growth to a larger segment of Ukrainian society. When Poland could uh, deliver what they did 
in the growth, um, when it came to growth for two, in two decades, there is no reasons why Ukraine cannot do the same. All this, um, unfortunately, takes place against the backdrop of the still ongoing conflict, and we have to bear this in mind. Full implementation of the Minsk package remains the only viable way towards a settlement of the conflict. While a functioning ceasefire is very welcome, this is only the beginning. The past two years have, as we all know, been an immense challenge for Ukraine. 1.5 million uh, IDPs internally displaced, um, 8,000 people killed, uh, 12, 13,000 people wounded. This is also something that the government has uh, to deal with. Ukraine needs and deserves support from the international community, including Norway. Some signs of stabilization are now emerging. After a sharp downturn last year, the World Bank expects Ukraine's economy to start growing again in 2016. This hopefully indicates that there are better times ahead. Norway has already increased our support to Ukraine tenfold, to a total of about 300 million Norwegian kroner. We have launched a support package for Ukraine. This package is aimed at supporting the Ukrainian government's reform efforts. It has three pillars, energy sector reform, justice sector reform, and good governance. This is very important reforms. Particularly, um, we um, will uh, be a partner when the government now starts to introduce what is necessary also when it comes to better governance. There should be, for example, zero acceptance of corruption and oligarchs should not decide on behalf of Ukraine. The Ukrainian politicians do decide what are um, the laws and the rules that every business people, uh, person have to comply with uh, in um, Ukraine. What we discuss here today uh, is um, development of the business cooperation. And this is hugely important to Ukraine's future. In 2014, Norwegian export to Ukraine amounted to approximately 140 million US dollars. Ukrainian export to Norway was about 45 million US dollars. There is no doubt in my mind that these numbers can and should increase. We see great potential in sectors such as agriculture, energy, seafood, and not least ICT, which is one of the main topics of this conference. And thank you um, for um, also uh, the commitment uh, in uh, this area. The Ukrainian IT sector is developing in high speed. Several Norwegian IT companies are already pres present in Ukraine, contributing to this development. More Norwegian companies have ambitions to enter the Ukrainian market. This conference is an excellent platform to plan for future cooperation between our two countries. I encourage everyone present here today to seize this opportunity. To invest in Ukraine today is a vote of confidence in the country's economy and its future. And it is a new stepping stone in the development of the relationship between our two countries. There are a lot of good reasons to invest in Ukraine today, and I believe there is also going to be a lot of return on these investments because it is ripe and the reforms are taking place. I wish I could stay on uh, for the rest of uh, the day. Um, I was uh, introduced by uh, referring to this uh, quote of uh, John uh, Kerry being cloned. I wish it was possible uh, because then I would, would have stayed and sent uh, someone else to the parliament where we have question time now at uh, 10 o'clock um, where I'm uh, privileged uh, to be invited for taking uh, questions on all uh, the easy challenges that Norway is faced with uh, in these days. Um, as I, I said yesterday, um, 
foreign policy has become domestic policy the two uh, last years, uh, very clearly so. And Ukraine is also part of this mosaic of uh, this new security architecture landscape that we are seeing um, in Europe. But be reassured, Norway uh, will always be a strong um, uh, uh, and very committed uh, to what has brought us, uh, what we have seen uh, since the Second World War, growth, trade, uh, freedom of speech, uh, but uh, also respect of other countries' territorial integrity. Thank you.